Okay, when we go to graph an exponential function, we have to list some things. Key points. And the key points always start with... Zero and one. Zero and one. So if I plug in zero into my function, I get one. And if I plug in one to my function, I get a half. And then we also have another thing we need to graph. The asymptote. So I'll go ahead and graph y equals zero. And I'll graph my points zero, one, one, a half. Did I have to graph it as is, or am I allowed to change what I count by? I can change what I count by as long as I change my graph, like the numbers on the graph so we know. Uh, I just didn't, but you could if you want to. Something I saw on the quiz <coughs> that I marked off for is, I'll, I'll just do it in a different color so you can kind of see it and then I'm going to erase it. Some people were doing graphs like this. Like where the green part is. This is all I saw from some of the graphs. Like I didn't see anything about it extending out where the asymptote was. And I feel like that's because you looked on your calculator. It's kind of how it looked on the calculator. You just copied down what you saw. But in order to get full credit, I need to know that you understand that this is an asymptote. And an asymptote, the graph goes along it, but it doesn't actually cross it. So you, if you were just being lazy and not extending it, let me tell you to make sure you extend it all the way out. If you're using your calculator and not understanding the graph, you need to come get help. We shouldn't need our calculator for this, unless you're just checking your answer. You shouldn't need the calculator. Okay, so that is the parent function. Now we're going to do our transformed function, our minus four. So if we are doing translate down four units, which variable does that affect, x or y? Down is y, and we're going to subtract four from each of the y values. So from here, I'm going to do zero comma one minus four. Well, what is zero? That's zero, negative three. For this one, I'm going to do one comma a half minus four. Zero comma negative three and a half, right? And then for y equals zero, I'm going to do 0 minus 4, because it affects the y value. So I would have y equals negative 4. Now, I could do that middle step in my head, but I'm just putting it there so you know how I'm getting my answers. I'm subtracting 4 from all my y values. So I've got negative 4. Then I've got 0, negative 3. And 1, whoops, that should be 1. Sorry, did you notice I made a mistake? Only won the whole year right there. So that should be one and then negative three and a half. And make sure you extend along that asymptote off the ground. Oh. <laughs> All right, questions about this one. If you are ready, go on and turn the page sign. Are you ready, Juan? If you have questions, put them back. Transformation. screen was so dark. Okay, the next one. Let's describe the transformation and then we're going to graph. Okay, remember if it is with the x, 
so the x is in the exponent, because with the x, it's going to affect it horizontally. So that plus 3 up with the x is actually meaning what? To the left 3. Why? Because x is always opposite. So we're going to translate left 3. And then what's the plus 2 on the outside of the function tell us? Translate up two units. So we're going to get our key points for the first function, f of x equals e to the x. Key points, we start with 0, plug that in, and I get 1. Plug in 1, we get E, which is about 2.718 something. Okay. And then what is our asymptote? I equals 0. Now we're going to do a transla uh, trans yeah, translation for both variables. This one is going to affect the x's. This one's going to affect the y's. So we're going to change both variables. So for our x's, if it's going left, what are we going to do? We're going to subtract 3. So if my x's is going to have 0 minus 3, then I'm going to have 1 minus 3. And then for y equals 0 is do I change the y equals 0 by subtracting 3 for the x's? No. No, it's not an x. Then we're going to change our y's by doing up two units. So what do I do to the y values? Add 2. So I'm going to take 1 plus 2 and get 3. I'm going to take e plus 2. It's approximately 4.7. How do I get 4.7? What? Oh, What's E? 2.7, and I'm adding 2 to it. So it's approximately. And then our Y equals 0. Do I need to change that? Yeah. What's a Y? Add 2. Oh, so we'll have Y equals 2. So our original graph, we've got 0, 1, and then 1, 2.7-ish. There's the original one. And then our new one, go y equals 2, negative 3, 3, negative 2, 4.7. It's a, it's a, um, the E parent function is um, a row where the number is 2.7-ish. <laughs> okay, the next one. We've got f of uh, x equals 3 to the x and g of x equals 3 to the 3x minus 5. Uh, I think I left you some space, but I ended up needing more space, at least in mine. I, you guys might just, just a heads up, don't write huge. I mean, you have some space. You need just a little extra space. All right, um, the original function is f of x equals 3 to the x. My key points are 0, 1, 1, what? You plug in one and you get three. And y equals zero. That's the original one. 
Then we have to do a transformation. <coughs> this one's tricky. There is a um, there's a horizontal shrink. Factor of one third. Because remember, when it's horizontal, it's always opposite. There's also a translation. Translate. It's going to be, I'll show you why in one moment. It's not going to be five. Actually, let me show you that right now. Yes, yeah, writing three. Huh? It's because of three. It's not going to be five. It is going to be to the right, but it's not going to be five. When you have, any time that you have um, both values in the X like that, we have to factor out the three to factor this three out. It's going to be X minus. No. Nope. We're going to factor it out. When you factor it out, you divide it out. So it's going to be 5 thirds because you're dividing out the 3. So we're going to translate 5 thirds to the right. So that would probably be like the trickiest part of this. Is if both values are there, if the um, number in front of the x and also with the x, you need to factor it out before you can write what the translation is. So when we go to write the new key points, both of these affect the x value. So we're going to multiply by what are we going to do first? This one is going to be 5 thirds 1, the first one. And then the second one is going to be 2, 3. So we needed to add the 5 thirds. Wait, we needed to divide by 3, then add the 5 thirds. That's what we need to do. Divide by 3, then add the 5 thirds. Um, you graph it to three. Five thirds is about one and two thirds. Oh, I didn't write the uh, asymptote didn't change because we didn't do anything to y. Ready to go on? No. We're good? All right, the other one's on the same page anyway. All right, so for this one, it's another E question. The original one, though, the original function is E to the negative x. So there's already a reflection on the original. So what are our key points for this? Our key points are going to be 0, always 0, and plug in 0 when you get 1. And then 1, so when I plug in 1, I get e to the negative 1. I get e to the negative 1, which is the same as 
1 over e, which is the same as like 1 over 2.7, whatever that number is. You can do 1 over e to the first on your calculator. Remember I said we use our calculator a tiny little bit today? Can you do 1 over, find e? This is the first column, you on the ln button, do 1 over e. Or do e to the negative 1, that would work also. e to the negative 1 would work also. Negative one. Um, I, you shouldn't come up to me during a quiz and be like, "Where's the E button?" Because you've been doing it this all these times in class, right? What's approximately? Uh, point three. Point three. Point four-ish. I mean, we're trying to graph it. We can't be that accurate. About 0.4. So 0, 1, and then 0 0.4, 1.4. <coughs> All right, next is our translated function. What's happening? We've got a negative 1 8. A vertical shrink, vertical shrink, factor of what? One eighth. The negative is not a shrink. What does a negative do? Reflection in the x axis. And what does it mean if it's in the x axis? That means over the x-axis. That means up and down vertical. So the vertical shrink of an eighth and the reflection in the x-axis, which variables do they affect? Which variable does a vertical shrink affect? That's multiply the y's. What does the reflection in the x-axis affect? It's also the y's because it's up and down. So that one we also multiply by the y's. So both of them are multiplied by the y's. So I'm only going to change my y. You know what? I totally forgot to write down my asymptote. Something like that. Thank you. Um, so I'm going to only affect my y value. I'm going to multiply both y's by negative and by 1 8. You can do that in one step because it's multiplication. So we're going to have 0, comma, negative an 8. And then 1, comma, and it would be like negative 1 over 8 times e to the negative 1, which you can type in your calculator. Negative 1. So that last, the last thing we typed in was e to the negative 1. You just need to multiply that by negative 1 8. Checking on her calculator right now because I want to show her how to type it in the correct way. Negative point zero four five nine. Negative point zero something. Yep. What was it? I already forgot. Negative point zero four five. It is a very tiny little number. I'm going to try to graph these. Oh, and my y, uh, my asymptote. If I multiply 0 by negative 1, 8, zero. it's still 0. So my asymptote's going to be the same. My 0, negative an eighth is about here. And then 1 is like barely even graphable. If this is so hard to graph, we have this thing called technology where we can graph the function and look at the table. So let's practice graphing the function on our calculator. So go to y equals. You don't need to graph the original. Just graph the g function. We are graphing the g function. We are not graphing ordered pairs. We are graphing the function, g of x. You're typing in and off. See, if you do 1 divided by 8, actually, I, well, still work that way. 
but do wipe out all the labels. I know you know where white holes is. Enter. Boom. Do it in like a brush. Okay. Go to the table. Once you've gotten it typed in, go to the table. Let's see if we can get an ordered pair that we can actually graph to make our picture look a little bit better. Plus, you can look at it and see what it looks like. Go to your table. What's an ordered pair that we could graph that might be easy to graph? What? I heard the negative three, but then I didn't. <coughs> oh, negative three and then negative 2.5, one, one, that one. Yeah, that one would be an easy one to graph. Negative three and then a negative 2.5, one, one, about there. So if you have a graphing calculator, there should be no excuse for not having accurate points. You don't just graph on the graphing calculator and kind of sketch what you see. You go find points in your table. Okay? Yes. Didn't get it. Okay. okay, go look at the next question. Because um, you forgot your variable. <laughs> Yeah. Because if it is, if there's no variable, it will always be the same concept. All right. This next chart looks a lot like the first chart, except for this one's for logarithms. The other one was for exponential, but they are total inverses of each other, so it is the same information. Um, the one thing that you need to be careful about, I feel, is the difference between horizontal and vertical translation. If you look at the the examples for horizontal and vertical translation, how can I tell it is a horizontal compared to a vertical if I just look at it? Yes. Parentheses. If there's no parentheses, it's vertical. If there's parentheses, it's horizontal. Those parentheses are important. Um, and I think everything else is the same stuff we've been seeing over and over again. Oops. So for this one, uh, we've got logs. We're going to start by writing the inverse function so we can get the key points from the inverse function and then switch them to get the log function. So same stuff we did in the last section. So I need to start with the inverse. If you didn't know how to do the last section where you define the inverse, well, I'm reteaching it again. So if you didn't learn it the first time, let's learn it the second time. How do I find the inverse of log x? I need to know the starts with a B. Okay, what is the base of log X? What is it? 10, because that is the common log where they don't actually write the 10, but you have to know that it's 10. So this is a log base 10. And to write the inverse, we do 10 to the X is what? To write the inverse. That's where we like switch the x and the y and we change the um, 4. What are my key points for this? 0, comma, 1, and 1, comma, 10. Then our, my asymptote is y equals 0. <coughs> then we change it to log by switching all my x's and my y's. So this will be 1, 0, 10, 1, and this asymptote is now <coughs> x equals 1. So we switch it all. Uh, 0. x equals 0. So that is the original function.
Yeah, well, it's 10. Now, you can count by different numbers if you wanted to. And actually, I did this in the last class, and after I did it, I was like, oh, I should have counted by different numbers, but I forgot to do that again, so, oh well. Let's do the translated or transfer, the transformed function, the g of x. So what is happening if in parentheses we have a negative one half x? So we have reflection in the y axis. That means we're going to times which variable by negative one? The x's, right. And then what was the other part? Horizontal stretch. I factor of two. That means we're going to multiply which variable? Horizontal stretch multiply which variable? X's by what number? Two. It's opposite of what it is in the question. So in the question it's a half, so we multiply by two. So I'm only changing the x's for both of those. And I'm only multiplying for both of those. So can I do it at the same time? Yes. So for all my x's, for g of x, for all my x's, I'm going to just multiply by negative a half. Not negative a half. I don't know why I did that. Negative two. Right? So this is x equals 0. Should I change that? So I'm multiplying. So I should multiply it, but it doesn't change anything. So this is where I was saying I probably should have changed my graph, but I didn't because now 20 is like way down here. <laughs> so I'm just going to approximate this. I'll be like halfway through by the time I, that was not a good approximation. I didn't get to graph 20 because it's way out there. But had I counted by something else, it would have been better. Oh well. I'm sorry. Okay, next one. <clears throat> so we're going to first start with the key points of the inverse. So we need to do the inverse first. Inverse is what base? Half. So my key points for the inverse are 0, 1, 1, half, and then y equals 0. Then we find for the f of x function, the log, we just switch my x and y. So we get 1, 0. And then we get half, 1 and x equals 0. So that's the original. We need to do transformation. So what is taking place here? What's the two tell us? Two out front. What does that tell us? Hey, if you do not know the answer, is there somewhere we could figure it out? If you don't know this answer, Brian, where could you go to figure it out? That chart, exactly. There's a number in front. It's a vertical stretch. Well, this one's a stretch. Could be a stretch, but this one's a vertical stretch. Factor of 2. 
And that affects which variable? We're going to multiply y's by 2. And what is that plus 4? What does that do? How do you know it's a horizontal and not vertical? Parentheses, right. So we've got a horizontal, or I'll just say translation, left four units. And since that is left, it's going to affect our x's. <clears throat> so for these points, I, I, I don't have a lot of space, sorry, I'm kind of writing downhill here. For this point, I'm going to multiply by y by 2 and translate my x left 4. So I'm going to take my 1 and subtract 4. Negative 3, and I'm going to multiply by 0, so still 0. My next point, I'm going to subtract 4, so we get negative 3.5. And then we have to take 1 times 2, 2. And then for my asymptote, that is an x. So I'm going to subtract 4. Translation four units right. So reflection the x axis. Here's my x axis. Reflecting over it is that x or y? That's a y. That's a vertical. So we're going to do negative to the function, the whole function, outside of it. So we'll have negative to the x. And after that, after that, then what are we doing? Four units right. <coughs> Where? It should be with the x. If it's minus four, so it's uh, to the right. It's going to be with the x. So we'll write negative negative two, and then to the x minus four, where that minus four is part of the exponent. That's all for that one. No. And then the next one <coughs> says two units up followed by a vertical stretch by a factor of two. So we have to do this in order or you will get the wrong answer. First thing is a um, translation two units up. So that would be where I do it to the function, not inside with the x. It would be to the function. So I have log base of one third x and then plus two. Notice there are no parentheses because it's not with the x. Then what do I do? We have to do a stretch of two. And that's to the whole thing. So if it's to the whole thing after there's stuff there, we're going to have to distribute. Um, I'm not going to want you to. <laughs> I want you to simplify it. It's not incorrect, it's just not simplified. They usually simplify our answers. So I have handed out graphs, and the assignment is in the book. I have five books in here. There's one right there. You can take a picture of the 
book. You can use the book. And the five of you can use the book. You can pull it up on the computer. Oh, yeah, I remember. Um, oh, yeah, I said it was on the computer. That's right. And I did put your grades in hack for that quiz if you want to know what you got on it. I'm sorry, say it again. What was it? I had it done. Oh, you must have had it done like after I had entered them. Yeah, and then I did the other side. Some of them didn't get entered. So I'll get it when okay. the the furthest I've entered in was like five four day two. Did you have any chance to greet the person in makeup? Nope. That's right here. Because I graded all the quizzes that everybody took last week. Yeah. So that back up in person I'll take care of makeup for this week. Okay. and then after that you need graphs for quite a few of them. Make sure you guys are writing down your transformations. 